Hello and welcome to a new chapter of mathematics on probability. Now since we have studied a bit about probability in standard 11, so today we are going to start with conditional probability. Later we are going to deal with multiplication theorems on probability and finally we are going to deal with some numerical problems that would be based on conditional probability. Now beginning with the basic definition or meaning of a conditional probability, we consider two events, let's say A and B, associated with a random experiment. Then the probability of occurrence of event A under the condition that B has already occurred, provided probability of B is not equal to zero, is called the conditional probability and is denoted by probability A by B, which is equal to probability of occurrence of event A under the condition that B has already occurred. Similarly, probability of B by A is the probability of occurrence of event B under the condition that A has already occurred. Thus, the probability of occurrence of event A under the condition that B has already occurred is given as P A by B is equal to P probability of A intersection B divided by probability of A where probability of A is not equal to 0. Similarly, probability of occurrence of event B under the condition that A has already occurred is given as probability of B by A is equal to probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B where probability of B is not equal to 0. Next, we are going to consider some properties of conditional probability. The first one is that the conditional probability of an event A given that B has occurred lies between 0 and 1. The second property states that the probability of an event A not occurring under the condition that B has already occurred is equal to and or is given as 1 minus probability of occurring of event A under the condition that B has already occurred. Next, we are going to discuss some theorems which are useful in computing the probabilities of simultaneous occurrence of two or more events associated with a random experiment. Theorem 1 states that if A and B are two events associated with a random experiment, then probability of A intersection B is given as the product of probability of A and the probability of occurrence of B such that event A has already occurred and probability of occurring of A is not equal to 0. It can be also given as the product of probability of B into probability of occurrence of event A under the condition that B has already occurred provided probability of B is not equal to 0. The next theorem says that if A1, A2 to A and B n events associated with a random experiment, probability of A1 intersection with A2 up to A n is given as shown, where probability of A i by A1 intersection of A2 up to A i minus 1 is the conditional probability of occurrence of A i provided A1 intersection of A2 up to A i minus 1 has occurred. Finally, we are going to consider a problem that is based on conditional probability and state that a dice is thrown twice and the sum of the numbers appearing is observed to be 7. We have to find the conditional probability such that the number 2 has appeared at least once. Now here the sample space S has 36 equally likely outcome and we suppose A to be the event such that the sum is 7 and B is the event in which number 2 appears at least once. Now here can A can be written as the combination of numbers such that the sum is 7. We have the combination as 1 and 6 or 2 and 5 or 3 and 4 or as 4 and 3 or 5 and 2 or as 6 and 1 as its numbers. Similarly, B can be written as 
the combination of numbers such that 2 appears at least once. So we have the combination as 2, or one, two and 1, 2 and 2, 2 and 3, 2 and 4, 2 and 5, and 2 and 6. Similarly, we can have the combination as 1 and 2, 3 and 2, 4 and 2, 5 and 2, or as 6 and 2. So these are the values of the numbers that can be that can appear on the dice so A intersection B is equal to 2 and 5 or 5 and 2 now here we are supposed to find the value of P B by A which means that the probability of occurring of B such that even A has already occurred for that we need to find the value of we know that P by B by A is given as probability of A intersection B by probability of A. Now we know that probability of A intersection B is given this. So we have probability of A intersection B equal to 2 divided by total number of sample space which is 36 similarly probability of A is the number of combinations divided by total sample space which is equal to 36 so we have probability of A intersection B equal to 2 by 36 and probability of A as 6 by 36 this gives us a value of 1 by 3 thus the conditional probability that number 2 appears at least once in the given problem is 1 by 3. Next we are going to consider another conditional probability problem in which we have a bag containing 10 white and 15 black balls. Two balls are drawn in succession without replacement and we have to find the probability that the first one is white and the second one is black. Here we consider the following two events. The first event that is A is the event of getting a white ball in the first draw and in event B we get a black ball in the second draw. Then the required probability is equal to as given in the problem the probability of getting a white ball in the first draw and the black ball in the second draw which is equal to probability of a and B which can be written as probability of A intersection B which can be further written by the use of the conditional probability we have the required probability equal to the product of probability of A in and probability of even B occurring such that even A has already occurred now here probability of A is given as now probability of A is equal to 10 C1 divided by 25 C1 which is equal to 10 by 25 or 2 by 5 and probability of B by A is equal to the probability of getting a black ball in second draw and a white ball has already been drawn in the first draw. Thus, probability of B by A can be written as 15 C1 divided by 24 C1. Since 24 balls are left after drawing a white ball in first draw, out of which 15 are black. Now, the required probability is given as in equation number A so we have the probability as required probability is equal to 
probability of A which is 2 by 5 into probability of event B occurring such that event A has already occurred which is equal to 15 by 24. Thus we have the required probability equal to 1 by 4. Thus the probability that the first drawn ball is white and the second one is black is 1 by 4. With this we conclude our first lecture on probability which was based on conditional probability and multiplication theorems on probability.